I find maps to be one of the most boring things on the planet known as Earth, as well as other subsequent planets with civilizations that also utilize the power of maps. I understand the practicality behind them, and you won't catch me doubting their importance anytime soon. Still, stating my appreciation for maps isn't suddenly going to lift them from the trenches of boredom. They'll remain down there forever, sloshing around in the grimy boredom sludge as it bubbles and broils deep within a metaphorical well. Nothing could possibly ever make maps remotely interesting in my eyes. Nothing, except for a video game with a primary mechanic focused mainly on all things mappy. Here's my two cents on Cardo. The premise in Cardo is fairly straightforward. There isn't much room for ambiguity here on account of the fact that this tale is practically a children's bedtime story come to life. You take on the role of an adorable cartographer in the making named Carto as she travels from land to land searching for her grandmother. Why is she searching for old Gam Gam? Uh, because Carto has this power that allows her to rotate pieces of the land around her by moving pieces on this map jigsaw puzzle thing which inadvertently leads to her and her Gammy getting caught up in a thunderstorm and subsequently separated from one another. Look, I I know it doesn't make much sense, alright? I, I get that. It doesn't help that major story moments are shown through still images either, but at the same time, the game isn't a non-fiction piece, and it still conveyed its messages well enough for me to understand, even if the on-screen action was a bit lacking. That isn't to say the entire game is devoid of dialogue, though. It's honestly quite the opposite. This game has a fairly decent roster of side characters for you to talk to, learn about the world from, and even adventure with. The writing that brings these characters to life is consistently light-hearted, while managing to maintain a strong focus on family, culture, and tradition. It was something I was quite appreciative of, as the light-heartedness reaches beyond just the dialogue. It's found throughout the game and the game's world. There are no combat sequences in Cardo. There is no primary antagonist to contend with, no darkness to banish or end of the world to stop. Personally, I haven't had such a laid-back experience since I played Animal Crossing New Horizons when that came out last year. Go at your own pace, combat-free titles aren't something we see very often in modern-day gaming, so I found it to be a refreshing change of pace. I didn't watch the credits roll on Cardo at the end of my roughly 5 hour playthrough and immediately reflect on my past life choices or the greater impact of culture and tradition. What I did feel however was a fairly decent sense of accomplishment for completing what turned out to be a rather challenging puzzle game. Now let's talk about gameplay, because it is without a doubt the central focus of Cardo. As I mentioned in my introduction to this review, Cardo's primary game mechanic is its map, or maps I guess I should say, since Cardo will take you through a variety of levels neatly disguised as different locales. We'll touch more on these locales once we reach the presentation section of the review. That's the next section coming up. But for now, let's talk about the map itself. See, this map is a special map. It's a super duper vernacular spectacular bad bitch map. It's a sell your gold lace glass eye and your hair follicles for good measure type of map. This map's gonna not only allow you to rotate pieces of it like a jigsaw puzzle whenever you want, it's gonna allow you to do so much more. It's gonna allow you to help worms eat dirt, organize a library that may or may not contain the knowledge of everything that has happened and or will happen in the history of ever. Uh, cook a live bird through the power of volcanic ventilation, play Tetris with glaciers, and so much more. To say that Cardo's use of its primary mechanic is imaginative and can consistently enjoyable would be an understatement. This game is practically the Mario Odyssey of maps. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day where I'd say that in a review. That isn't to say the game's puzzles are all enjoyable or of consistent quality either. There were sadly a few obstacles I came across in my journey that brought my progression to a halt and required the use of a guide or two. I'm happy to inform you that this only happened twice throughout my playthrough, though in a 5 or 6 hour game, having two roadblocks impede progression can feel rather substantial. It didn't ruin my experience with Cardo or anything of that degree, but I did still find it to be worth noting. When you aren't playing Beyblades with map pieces, the only other thing you'll really spend your time doing is conversing with people. Talking with everyone in any given level is oftentimes vital to progression, as well as reminding you of where to go if you ever forget your current objective. If you aren't one to enjoy enjoy text-based games devoid of any voiceovers, with a focus on world-building and character relationships, Cardo may not be for you. If you are into those things, however, Cardo may be worth adding to your video game wish list, as it supplies dialogue in droves. Not at the level of, say, Disco Elysium or Pillars of Eternity, but still enough to where you're easily able to spend a few hours in this game solely just reading. 
Cardo sports a unique mechanic that helps it stand out from the crowd of generic, by-the-numbers video games constantly fighting one another for a chance to suck your wallet dry like a mosquito buzzing around in the middle of the Everglades during summertime. It's a mechanic that's often utilized in enjoyable and creative ways, oftentimes leaving me excited to know what gimmick would come into play next. However, if Cardo were any longer in its runtime than what it actually is, I think I would start seeing diminishing returns on my experience to time invested ratio. I also think that while the storytelling and world building are nice touches, I personally could have done with a bit less of it. Dialogue is fine and all, but it's not something I really expect to see in a puzzle game. So my patience with conversations tends to be a bit shorter in these situations. Still an enjoyable experience from a gameplay still an enjoyable experience from a gameplay standpoint though, and I honestly think that's a great way to summarize Cardo as a complete package enjoyable. The storytelling is enjoyable for what it is, the gameplay is enjoyable despite its flaws, and the presentation is absolutely adorable from its hand-painted aesthetic down to the design of Cardo herself. This game absolutely nails the feeling of visuals reminiscent of a children's bedtime story with its centralized color palettes brimming with vibrancy and its textured surfaces that help the environments pop ever so slightly. Though I was initially worried about a potential lack of environmental variety, I was happy to have these doubts quickly squashed upon visiting my third or fourth locale. Cardo starts in somewhat monotonous woodlands but eventually gives way to under around tunnels, deserts, tundras, and more. I enjoyed the variety of places Cardo journeys through during her quest to find her grandmother, which is a sentiment I initially didn't think I'd walk away with. There isn't too much to comment on in regards to the game's music and sound. While Cardo does have a simple, unobtrusive soundtrack, I, I couldn't help but occasionally feel annoyed by it, uh, namely in the moments where I was stuck, but also in moments containing puzzles with more complex solutions. Hearing a few tracks for longer than I would have liked didn't really sit well with me, but aside from this happening on a few occasions, the soundtrack is serviceable, if a bit forgettable. The sound effects are also fairly generic, with nothing really standing out here either. The key difference between the sound effects and the soundtrack of Cardo being that the former didn't ever annoy me during my time with the game. As was the case with the soundtrack though, sound effects here are serviceable, but they aren't anything to really write home about. Like the other components we've previously discussed, the presentation in Cardo is enjoyable, save for a few short-lived occasions. It may not personally be my cup of hot lava, but it works decently within the confines of Cardo which is sometimes all you can ask for when it comes to presentation in video games. Cardo is an enjoyable game for both map lovers and map deniers alike. Though its gameplay may suffer from a lack of variety, and its story and presentation leave something to be desired, there are still plenty of things here deserving of your time. There are just the right amount of puzzle mechanics to warrant playing Cardo, while an endearing art style helps give reason for enjoying this game passively, be it with a friend or via your favorite content creator. It may not be perfect, but it's perfectly deserving of a verdict of definitely worth sale price. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this review. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game, so feel free to leave your opinions down in the comments below. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider hitting that thing, clicking that other thing, and checking out the links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.